making Mirbicron an exercise mimetic as well as a cold exposure mimetic. So now you don't have to exercise or go to the ice bath, even though a combination of an ice bath exercise with Mirabicron, and yes, I've already done this, great for fat loss. So with the precautions and the disclaimers and the warnings out of the way, let's look into the evidence-based unique characteristics of Mirabicron solely when it comes for its off-label purposes, fat loss. Right? There's a boatload of scientific publications performed on the medical treatments, the safety and efficacy data, the overall clinical trials. Interesting, but not applicable for this video. Let's just stick to what we're really interested in here. Mirabicron increases brown adipose tissue metabolic activity. It increases beige adipocytes, which is increased brown adipose tissue within subcutaneous white adipose tissue, which is actually similar to cold exposure and exercise, making Mirabicron an exercise mimetic as well as a cold exposure mimetic. So now you don't have to exercise or go to the ice bath, even though a combination of ice bath exercise with Mirabicron, and yes, I've already done this, great for fat loss. Mirabicron increases resting energy expenditure and resting metabolic rates, another exercise mimetic effect. It's around 7% increase at the 50 milligram dose, between 11 to 15% at the 100 milligram to 150 milligram dose, and between 13 to 16% at the 200 milligram dose based on a single administration. The half-life is 50 hours, right? So with consecutive administrations or multiple administrations over the day, you would expect an increase in resting energy expenditure and resting metabolic rates um, far beyond what's documented here. And again, the citations are down below in case you want to run, uh, read these studies by yourself. Mirabicron increases basal body temperature between 0.1 to 0.3 degrees Celsius, which is between 0.2 to 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit. I've noticed that my basal body temperature and my body temperature during the workout has increased substantially, but I'm also using SLUPP332, which also increases basal body temperature and body temperature during the workouts. And then alongside all of the other lipolytic agents, um, like cardarine and, uh, well, in combination with clenbuterol, salbutamol, which we'll get into a little bit later on, growth hormone, right? Carnitine, which helps with fatty acids uh, shuttling into the mitochondria. Body temperature will go up when you start stacking Mirabic Run with a couple other fat loss aids for your fat loss journey. So make sure you bring a towel to the gym and shower more often. Mirabic Run improves pancreatic beta cell function, resulting in better uh, glucose management in the bloodstream. It reduces skeletal intramuscular triglycerides as a result of a beta-3 adrenergic receptor stimulation and increase in resting energy expenditure, but certainly during the workout, energy expenditure goes up, burning more fatty acids within skeletal muscle and from adipose tissue, obviously. Mirabicron increases type 1 muscle fibers, which enhances fatty acid oxidation and mitochondrial biogenesis. Um, which also enhances the peroxisome proliferator activator receptor gamma coactivator 1A mRNA expression, and it might enhance a PPR gamma mediate effects of telmosartan and should go well with cardarine. So if you're taking Mirabicron, cardarine, and telmosartan with SLUPP332 for mitochondrial biogenesis, I mean, that's a whoop dee of fatty acid oxidation and increase uh, type 1 muscle fibers, but SLUPP332 also increases type 2A muscle fibers. So endurance, fatty acid oxidation, overall stamina, and body composition should definitely go up when you combine all of these together. Mirabicron improves exercise capacity, just like clenbuterol and salbutamol. It raises high-density lipoprotein, apolipoprotein A1, Level, so that's promising. Mirabicron reduces total cholesterol levels. It improves oral glucose tolerance tests by improving insulin sensitivity and overall glucose uptake in skeletal muscle. And it lowers hemoglobin A1C levels. But this is all coming from obesity, insulin resistance, and diabetes studies. So if you're already doing everything right, or eating right, or doing your daily fasted cardio, you're taking your azetamide to lower total cholesterol levels, you take some testosterone and you manage your caloric intake, particularly carbohydrates, and you don't make those to growth hormone multiple servings over the day, then I don't think you're going to notice any benefits regarding your total cholesterol levels or uh, improvement of glucose tolerance or hemoglobin A1C levels. But again, my blood work will drop at the end of this month. 
And then let's see how much of an improvement I got from, well, taking 150 milligrams Mirabicron per day alongside everything else that I'm doing correctly. Mirabicron improves bile acid metabolism. Very good for overall excretion of metabolic waste products. Even though I couldn't find any clear scientific evidence that Mirabicron can actually improve uh, metabolic parameters of the liver. Um, again, blood work will determine that in the future. Mirabicron potentially improves bile acid flow and removes gallstones by increasing gallbladder size up to 35% at the 200 milligram per day dose. I haven't done any organ imaging on Mirabicron, but the last time I did organ imaging, my gallbladder was the exact same size. And I can't say that bile acid metabolism or stool has improved in any way, shape or form, but the scientific evidence is there down below in case you're interested. Mirabicron might be a potential treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia as there's some overlap with overactive bladder syndrome so if the prostate is larger pushing against your bladder and now you have to pee more often if you can increase the size of your bladder and when you do pee the urine flow is uh, significantly increased perhaps in combination with tomsulosin or anything else that might resolve a benign prostatic hyperplasia then this could be a route that you need to look into if you suffer from this condition right discuss this with your doctor if you have a BPH yourself. It might protect against heart failure, it might improve metabolic disorders, and unfortunately, Mirabicron has no established anabolic effects unlike Clembutrol and Solbutamol, but I couldn't find any clear scientific evidence where Mirabicron has actually been studied regarding its potential anabolic effects. Now, since it only works on a bit of three adrenergic receptors, you would say that there's no anabolic effects because the anabolic effects are coming from the beta-2 adrenergic receptors, which is what clenbuterol and solbutamol is active on. Before we continue, I quickly want to highlight one study performed on healthy individuals. Many of the studies on Mirabicron have been performed on unhealthy individuals suffering either from an overactive bladder or obesity or insulin resistance, diabetes. And that's not really what we're after. We're after the effects in healthy individuals. So this study is uh, performed by Lowe et al, published on February 2019, not too old, titled Acute Metabolic and Cardiovascular Effects of Mirabicron in Healthy Individuals. In this study, they took 17 healthy volunteers aged between 18 to 35 years old, received either a single dose of 50 milligrams Mirabicron, 100 milligrams, 150 milligrams, or 200 milligrams once with a three to 14 day washout in between escalating dosages. So you start at 50 milligrams single dose, Wait a couple days, three to 14 days, then the second dose of 100 milligrams, 150 milligrams, 200 milligrams, etc. During the study, the researchers kept track of their body weight, waist to hip ratio, blood pressure, body composition, and serum glucose and insulin levels. Energy expenditure peaked at 180 minutes after Mirabicron administration, where the highest resting energy expenditure was observed at the 100 milligram and 200 milligram dosages supraclavicular skin temperature that's this area mostly increased with the 50 and 150 milligram dosages but the 200 milligram dosages kept skin temperature again in this area comparable to baseline 180 minutes post administration diastolic blood pressure increased only slightly with all dosages so that's promising systolic blood pressure did increase after the 150 milligrams and 200 milligrams administrations and resting heart rate also increased with all dosages with the most significant increase seen at 150 milligrams and 200 milligrams administrations. Again, let's say 180 minutes post-administration in a single serving. So this is important to understand. Most of the problems regarding resting heart rate and blood pressure start to manifest at higher dosages in a single serving. This is not what is advised when it comes to fat loss. I would advise most people, if you go with Mirabicron, similar to Clenbuterol or Solbutamol, to split up your dosages. And again, Mirabicron and Clenbuterol have reasonably long half-lives, whereas Solbutamol has a reasonably short half-life. It would still be better to split up the dosage to minimize any potential negative side effects when it comes to blood pressure or an increase in resting heart rate. In this study, just like so many other single administration high-dose human studies, the researchers feel that higher dosages of Mirabicron are not suitable for daily administrations simply due to an increase in resting heart rate and overall blood pressure. And again, this is one of the reasons why I would recommend everybody to split up the dose. Now, personally, I've experimented with up to 150 milligrams Mirabicron per day in combination 
with Thomas Sartan and doing daily fasted cardio and everything else that you need to do to keep your blood pressure and overall resting heart rate in range. My blood pressure stayed pretty much identical after adding in the Mirabic run, but my resting heart rate did increase by approximately three to five points at the maximum dose of 150 milligrams Mirabic run per day spaced over three servings, 50 milligrams before fasted cardio, before the workout and before bed. Now, the effective dose of Climbutrol, let's say 80 micrograms to 120 micrograms daily, my resting heart rate would increase between 10 to 25 points. And that's the difference between Mirabicron and Climbutrol. Mirabicron doesn't work on the heart, but Climbutrol does significantly. And during the workout, it's, it's a huge difference, right? My heart rate during the workout was very manageable. I didn't really notice a significant increase at the maximum dose of Mirabicron that I took. But at Climbutrol from 20 micrograms onwards, my heart rate during the workouts is already sky f***ing high. Imagine at 80 micrograms per day or 120 micrograms per day, um, it would be way too high. My rest periods would be twice as long because my heart rate would be so high and it'd take a very long time to come back down for another strenuous set. So when it comes to resting heart rate, from my personal experience and heart rate during the workouts, Mirabicron wins hands down.